we're going to open up with a reading of the law. And as soon as you get there, my brother, go ahead and pick it up at verse 1. Exodus chapter 20, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Amen. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Amen. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Keep reading. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. Amen. Looked like that covered everybody, didn't it? Amen. Praise God. And we read these commandments every Sabbath day because we understand and believe that they are ordained unto life. Let's go over to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, we're going to pick it up at verse 13. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, we're going to pick it up at verse 13. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Some of the matter, my brother. The whole matter. The whole matter. Keep reading. Fear God and keep his commandments. Uh-huh. For this is the whole duty of man. Keep reading. For God shall bring every work into judgment. He's going to bring some of your works, my brothers For and sisters. For God shall bring every, every work. Every work unto judgment. You cannot hide from this God. You can't get away from him. He's going to bring every work into judgment with what else, my brother? With every secret thing. With every secret thing. Whether it be good. Whether it be good. Or whether it be evil. Better check it out. You better fear this God. Let's go to the last book of the Bible, Revelation chapter 22. The last book of the Bible, we have to point that out. Because surely the commandments of God should not be in the last book of the Bible. Surely. <laughs> Revelation chapter 22, we're going to pick it up at verse 14, my brother. Revelation chapter 22, pick it up at verse 14. When you get there, go ahead and read it. Blessed are they that do his commandments, mm. that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Keep reading. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth he maketh a lie. Amen. Now, we don't read the, the commandments in the beginning of the Bible. We don't read them in the middle of the Bible, yes, sir. and now in the last book of the Bible. Yes, sir. So don't let nobody tell you that the commandments of the Lord are done away with. Amen. They are just flat out lying to you. We keep these commandments because we understand, like I said before, they are ordained unto life. Well, uh, at this time, we're going to ask all the children to go ahead and go to their respective classrooms. Amen. <laughs> Amen in Jesus' name. I love you. Amen. Amen. Babies got to learn that word of God as well. I love you. Amen. Train them up. Got to train them up while they're young. Amen. That's it. That's right. Right. Just 
Give them a couple more minutes, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Brothers, y'all give me the thumbs up when we clear to go. good? Praise God. All right. Well, first of all, I just want to start off by giving honor to God, because again, without him, I would not be standing here. Amen. Um, and I just want to thank everyone um, for, again, allowing me to come down to be a part of the family and the body of Christ. It is a pleasure and an honor to stand before you. And, and I O G the Israel of God, Houston. Praise God. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Well, my name is Brother Harris. Reading for me today is going to be Brother Tobijah. And today we're going to bring a lesson entitled, Enter ye in at the straight gate, because narrow is the way. Enter ye in at the straight gate, because narrow is the way. See, many of us think we have our own paths, meaning your walk is not my walk. And my walk is not your walk, which well, is so true, well. right? But oftentimes we fail to realize that there is only one way, and that's through Jesus. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me, right? So there is a right and a wrong way. See, today we're going to take, a, take our own perspectives off the table. This lesson is for all the believers out there. Thank you, Lord. you say you believe in God. You say you believe in Jesus. So let's read this book. Amen. Right? So this lesson is broken down into three parts. The first thing we're going to take a look at is the fear of the Lord. Because you've got to get some act right. And then secondly, we're going to look at the path of the blessed. Because it's not an easy path, but you have to stay on the right path and endure all the way until the end. And lastly, we're going to look at the choice. We're going to look at your choice. It's your choice to walk to make the right and wrong decisions in this life. Because we just read that the Lord is going to bring every work into judgment, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Right? So let's pick this up in the book of Psalms, chapter 34. Let's get some foundational scriptures here. The book of Psalms, chapter 20, 34, we're going to read one verse here. Psalms chapter 34, we're going to read one verse, verse 11. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. The book of Psalm 34, verse 11. Come, ye children, hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. He said, come, ye children, listen unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. And why is that? One of the reasons is that we can read to you, it's required of you. It's required of you to, uh, to fear the Lord, to listen to him, and to understand that, again, he can kill you in his flesh, raise you up, and then kill you again and throw you in a lake of fire. But let's take a look at another reason here. Let's go over to Proverbs chapter 28. Let's get in some of these one-hitter quitters. Then we're going to dive into the lesson. Proverbs chapter 28. It is required of you to fear the Lord thy God and to walk in all of his ways. Right. Proverbs chapter 28, we're going to pick it up at verse 14, one verse. Let's look at another reason here. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read it. Happy is the man that feareth always, but he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. He said, happy is the man that feareth always, because if you fear always, you're going to act right always, Amen. right? But if you stop fearing the Lord, you begin to think you have a little lead way towards foolishness. And that's what we got to stay away from. And I'm here to tell you again that there is, once again, a right and a wrong way to serve this God. Amen. Let's go over to Matthew chapter 7, and we're going to pick this up at verse 13 and see where this lesson all started from. 
Matthew chapter 7. We're going to take our time. Y'all ain't got nothing to do today, right? No. All right. Just checking. Matthew chapter 7. We're going to pick it up at verse 13. And we're going to find out exactly where this lesson all started. Matthew chapter 7. Pick it up at verse 13. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. Into ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. He say, enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way which leadeth into destruction. And many of you, many of us, are going to find that way. Keep reading. 14. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. It's going to be just few people. Few people that find that straight and narrow path. Because again, and I'm going to say this often throughout this lesson, there is a right and a wrong way. We might take different paths to get to where we're trying to go, but we all have to end up on that straight and narrow path, brother. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go over to Proverbs chapter 1. Again, we're just setting the foundation. Might be a little quiet today, and that's all right. It'd be like this sometime. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 1. We're going to pick it up at verse 5. As soon as I can get there. Proverbs chapter 1. We're going to pick it up at verse 5. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read it. Amen. Proverbs 1, verse 5. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. He said a wise man will hear and will increase learning. Skip down to verse 7 and read that, brother. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. It's the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. See, now right here we have two different types of individuals right here. You got a wise man and a fool. See, this wise man will first hear and then increase in learning. That's what we just read, right? But the fool hates wisdom and instruction. Mm -hmm. but, by the Lord, by the, but the Lord, by the mouth of Solomon, just told you that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Why is that? Because when you fear something or someone, you act upon it. And we're not talking about respect here. We're talking about flat out fear. It's a difference. You have to be afraid of this God. You have to be terrified of this God to ensure you stay on the straight and narrow path. Amen. Now let's get into this lesson to get an example of what fear looks like. Let's go over to Jonah chapter 3. We need to get an example of what fear really looks like. Jonah. Chapter 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. And we all know the story of Jonah. Amen. He gets swallowed up by the whale because of disobedience, as he doesn't want to preach to Nineveh the warning from the Lord. Mm -hmm. So here the Lord is coming to Jonah again the second time. All right? So let's look at this example of true fear. Jonah chapter 3, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Jonah chapter 3, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. He said, Go unto Nineveh to that great city and preach unto the preaching that I bid thee. Keep reading. So Jonah arose. And went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Keep reading. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great journey, excuse me, exceeding great city of three days' journey. Uh-huh. And Jonah began to enter into a city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. He said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So here is the warning, and let's see if the people took heed to it. Read verse 5, brother. So the people of Nineveh believed God. Well, they did what? They believed God. 
The people of Nineveh believed God, keep reading, and proclaimed a fast, uh -huh. and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. Keep reading. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. So the king even is taking heed to this warning. Keep reading. Amen. Seven. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. He done even threw the beast into it. Well, Don't even let your animals drink, eat, no nor drink, no do anything. I want everybody fasting. That's how serious this Lord, this God that we serve is. Keep reading. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth uh -huh. and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. He said, cry mightily unto God and let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hand. Keep reading. Who can tell if God will turn and repent? Who can tell if God can turn, is going to turn and repent? Keep reading. And turn away from his fierce anger, that we perish not. Look, we're going to do this anyway, though. He might spare us. He might not spare us. But we're going to do everything we can to prevent him from knocking us off. Because we fear God. And these ain't even people that was in the truth. Now, what do you think that we should be doing, the ones that understand the word of God? You think you should be running to the Lord? You think you have to fear this God. This king right here had some fear. And because of his fear, he and his people took heed to the warning. And the Lord, we're going to see that the Lord spared him. Keep reading. Ten. Verse 10. Yes, sir. And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he, said, he had said that he would do unto them. And he did it not. Praise God in Jesus' name. He did not. And that is what the way that we have to think, and that's the way that we have to be. We have to have the mindset of doing right at all times. Amen. You can't take a risk like, like some people do. You can't go out in this world and say, you know what? The Lord may, if I, if I do a little bit of wickedness today, the Lord might spare me. He ain't going to just cut me off for eating a little bit of this or a little bit of that. He ain't going to cut me off if I miss one Sabbath day. He ain't going to cut me off if I decide to dishonor my parents once, once or twice. He won't do that. The Lord is a merciful God. He's a loving God. He knows my heart, right? Don't take that risk. Just live right every single day. Amen. But do you see how you can turn your situation from destruction to deliverance just by listening and obeying God? Amen. Mm. The Lord tells us that obedience is better than, than well, y'all know that book, in Jesus' name. So let's bring that into fullness right there. Let's bring that obedience is better than sacrifice into fullness. Let's go uh, back to Matthew chapter 7. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 7. And this time, we're going to pick it up at verse 21. Matthew chapter 7, and we're going to pick it up at verse 21. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Doesn't matter what you're trying to give up in this life. You could be doing everything you think that is right, but if you're not doing it according to the word of God, well, it means nothing. It. Matthew chapter 7, we're going to pick it up at verse 21. When you get there, go ahead and read it. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Let's read that one more time, and we're going to finish that verse. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. I want that just to sink in a little bit for everybody. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Just because you claim to believe in God, does not mean that you're going to enter into the kingdom of God to be as God. But what? Brother, finish that verse. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. You got to do what this book says. 
You got to do what the word of God says. That's the only thing that's going to get you into the kingdom. Amen. Now, you can into, enter into the kingdom, but it's your choice where you're going to end up in that kingdom. It says, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, you have to serve this God with all of your might and not all of your mouth. Remember that. Verse 22, my brother. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. Mm. See, you sacrificing many things here. You giving up many things. In thy name you have done many wonderful works. But what is the Lord going to say, my brother? 23. Read it. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Think about that. Let that sink in a little bit. You out serving the Lord as you think. You're feeding the homeless. You show up to class every week. You're going to all the feast days. But as soon as you leave, that old man or that old woman creeps up. And you back to your wickedness thinking that you can't be, that you ain't being seen. The Lord sees everything that you are doing. Just because you putting on a front to this brother or to myself or to the pastors here and to your sisters up in here don't mean God ain't looking at you. He said, and then will I profess unto them I never knew you. Depart from me. Ye that work iniquity. Mm -hmm. Read verse 24, brother. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will, liken unto, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. See, you got to hear this book. You got to listen to it. Listen to the word of the Lord. Yes, and then you got to put it into action. Yes, you listen, you learn, and you do. You listen, you learn, and you do. If you know to do better, then do better. See, it's not enough just to be a hearer of the word, but you got to be a doer of this word. Let's go over to James chapter 1. We're just walking it down. We're going to take our time today. We're just walking it down. Sometimes, like I said, it's quiet, but sometimes it just be like that. James chapter 1. We're going to pick it up at verse 22. James chapter 1. We're going to pick it up at verse 22. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. And that's what you're doing. You're just deceiving yourself. You ain't faking the Lord out. He said, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, De uh, deceiving your own selves. That's all that you're doing, y'all. Because if you want to enter into the kingdom of God, you have to put in the work. The Lord ain't giving no free rides out here. He got this whole book from Genesis to Revelation, and you just want to pick and choose what you want uh, to, to do out of it. Oh, you know what? I'm, I don't think it take all that, Brother Tabaja. <laughs> I don't think it take all of that. I don't think it, the Lord meant that you, you have to, you know, uh, not eat these certain things. I think you just need to pray over it and bless it. Right? I don't think it take that you got to go to and, 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 and uh, keep the feast days. I don't think it take all that, brother. Right? I take care of my mama, but she was a bad, she was a bad mother. So I don't respect her all the time, but I provide for her. But the books say, honor your mother or father without stipulation there. Right? So it say, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, yep. deceiving your own, says. Read verse 23, brother. For any, if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Keep reading. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. You ain't know who you are no more. You don't even know who you are. He said, for if a man, if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. Amen. 
you don't have a clue who you are. You're just faking the funk. <clears throat> and you think the Lord don't see who you are. You think that you're just going to waltz on up into the kingdom of God saying, Lord, Lord, I did this, I did that. I served you. The Lord know if you served him, served him with all of your might. He know if you're putting in the work or not. He know if you truly have the right mindset in this thing. You can't hide from this God. You can't do what you want to do. You have to live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Every word. Read verse 25, brother. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he, being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Now, we're in class today, right? We're in class today. What is one of the most important words that we just read in this scripture? It says, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and what? Continueth. You can't fall back. No, not at all. You have to continue in this word all the way into the end. What if you don't walk this walk all the way, and then at the last minute you start getting some doubt in your mind, and you decide to go ahead and go back to your old ways, and then the Lord decides to bust open them clouds at that very moment? What you going to do then? What you going to say then? Now, you don't walk this walk from since a, a child all the way up. And you get all the way into the end. And you say, you know what? That God ain't coming back. He didn't come back when the prophets were there. He didn't come back when the apostles were there. They've been, they been, they been reading the same scriptures we've been reading all of these years. He ain't coming back, right? And then... He bust open them clouds while you half naked. <laughs> then he bust open them clouds when you done drunk yourself into a stupor and you out there acting foolish now. Ain't nothing wrong with a little sip. We ain't saying nothing wrong with any of that. But if you going out there getting drunk and you don't know what you're doing the next day or the next night, something wrong with that. You got to understand What's at stake here? He said, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, not being a forgetful hearer, but finish that, my brother. Amen. <clears throat> but a doer of the work. But a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. This man shall be blessed in his deed. Y'all still with me? Oh, yeah. Got to keep you awake. It's going to be a little quiet today. That's okay. Because it be like that sometimes. But let's look at something else regarding fear. Let's go over to Proverbs chapter 19. Proverbs chapter 19. We're going to look at something else regarding this fear. One verse here, verse 23. Proverbs chapter 19, pick it up at verse 23. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read. The fear of the Lord tended to life. It tended to what? Tended to life. It tended to life. Keep reading. And he that hath it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. That life that we're talking about right there, that's everlasting life. The fear of the Lord tended to life. That's everlasting life, and he shall not be visited with evil. So how do you get to a point to where you get visited with evil? We got to find that out. Well, right? Let's look at old King Saul here. Let's go over to 1 Samuel chapter 15. How do you get to a point to where you get visited with evil? got to ask yourself these questions because we're living a life to where all types of evil is always around us. 
Satan trying to knock you off day in and day out. Amen. Seeking whom he may devour. And if you let up one little bit, one little bit, you let one little thought seek in. You let one little old bitty thing just creep in your mind, it could cause a whole big blunder, and you could be messed up. I see it all the time. 1 Samuel chapter 15, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 1 Samuel chapter 15, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read it, brother. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to, sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people. Over Israel. Uh huh. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Keep reading. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that, that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. So the Lord said right here, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way. So the Lord, he remembers things. He knows again. Might be contingent sometime on your mercy that you might receive. You remember if you keep on praying to, praying to him, asking for forgiveness all the time, but you keep going back and doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting deliverance? Don't work like that, y'all. The Lord remembers things. He's checking, your, checking them boxes off. It's a, it's a reason why people go reprobate. Read verse 2 again, my brother, and I'm going to quit talking so much. <laughs> verse 2, thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid way for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Keep reading. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. So much for that powder puff God that everybody think we serve. Huh? He said, utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not. Slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. He covered everybody. He didn't leave nobody out. So much for the powder puff Jesus that everybody thinks that we serve. So what makes you think that the Lord won't cut you off? What makes you think that you got all these chances to get it right? Oh, I'm young. I got time. Do you? The Lord spared me once before. He going to spare me again, is he? He might, but he might not. What if he don't? That's what you always have to put at the forefront of your mind. You have to walk this walk consistently every single day to make sure that your calling and your election is sure. Amen. You can't let nobody take your crown. Amen. So he said, utterly destroy everything, right? Skip down to verse 7 and read it. Verse 7. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah until thou comest to Shur, that is opposite Egypt. Keep against Comes to sure that is over against Egypt. Keep reading, verse 8. Oh, gotcha. uh, and he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive, and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. Keep reading. But Saul and the people spared Agag, mm. and the best of the sheep, and of the oxen, and of the fatlings, and the lambs, and all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vile and refuse, that they utterly de they destroyed utterly. Now surely, the Lord that loves everybody, according to mainstream Christianity, will be understanding and merciful and gracious. Everything that you know, everybody starts saying he's, he's going to be merciful. He's going to have grace. Surely, he's going to have all of those good old things to go ahead and allow you to keep this cattle and all the good things, right? Even though he commanded you to destroy everything, mm -hmm. surely he's going to let you keep all the good stuff. I mean, he's going to have some mercy on you, right? Because we serve a merciful God. 
We serve a loving God. He's full of grace and mercy. And he is. Read verse 10. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, Keep reading. It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king. Keep reading. For he has turned back from following me and hath not performed my commandments. He has not performed my commandments. Just like I said to do it. Not like you thought. Not like you felt. Not like what you believed or what you perceived. Just like I said to do it. I said, go through and kill all of the Amalekites. Don't spare nobody. Not women, not children, not men, not the suckling child, not the camel or the ass. Kill everybody. So what makes you think that you can pick and choose how you going to walk this walk and serve this God? Ask yourself that. Mm. Oh, yeah, brother. At the end of 11. Finish that. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. So Samuel cried all night because he knows that God don't play. It's over with. Skip down to verse 13, my brother, and read that. Mm. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. Mm. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Flat out, La. Flat out, La. You know you don't spare a king, eh, guy? Lying. Read verse 14, brother. And Samuel said, What meaneth then this bleeding of the sheep in mine ears mm. and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? What is this that I'm hearing then, man? Why are you all these animals and these sheep then, brother? Because I know what God told you to do. Come on now. Read verse 15, brother. And Saul said, they have brought them up from the Amalekites. Mm. For the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. But you are the king, man. If the head is sick, the whole body is sick. It's the blind leading the blind. Skip down to verse 19, brother, and read that. Wherefore then... Didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? Not evil. Evil. Just by sparing a man. Not evil by taking some good sheep and the goodness of, of, of all the things that, that all the Amalekites had. That ain't evil, is it? That's good. Right? But what did God say? If God said, kill everybody, then you got to kill everybody. Now, we ain't promoting killing nobody in this day and time. That's the Bible said, I shall not kill. But we're going off the commandment what we're reading right now, right? If the Lord said, you better do it. It ain't no in-between. It ain't no ifs and Thank you, my sister. In Jesus' name. Where we at, brother? We just finished 19. Skip down to verse 23 and read it. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. No, it's not. Yeah. What did it say? Yeah. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Keep reading. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. So if you're stubborn, according to the word of God, you don't want to believe it or do it, or do exactly what it say, it's as iniquity and idolatry? Iniquity and idolatry. Keep reading. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. Not for just sparing a man. You didn't follow orders. Not for taking the goodly things of the flock. Lord, Lord, haven't I did this in your name? Okay. Haven't I did that in your name? And what is he going to say, brother? Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. Mm. Verse 24, read it. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned. Oh, now you, now you want to realize that you have sinned, huh? And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned. Keep reading. For I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people 
and obey their voice. You feared who? The people. You feared the people and not this God that we serve? Keep reading. Now, therefore, I pray thee, pardon my sin. Pay attention here. And keep reading. And turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord. Keep reading. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee. I can't do it. I can't, I can't hang out with you no more, brother. You transgressing the word of the Lord. I can't get down like that no more. Keep reading. For thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. For thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. Keep reading. And the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. Let that sink in. So by rejecting the word of the Lord through disobedience can lead to the Lord rejecting you. And something else can come upon you too. Let's go over to 1 Samuel 16. Just flip right on over. And we're going to see here that Samuel is in the process of anointing David king. But we're going to see what else can come upon you for being disobedient and not keeping the word as, uh, as the Lord says. Because you've got to live by how many words of the Lord? Amen. Every word of the Lord, right? Not what you pick and choose, not what you feel, not what you believe or perceive. Every word of the Lord. All you got to do is read it. It's simple. 1 Samuel, chapter 16, pick it up at verse 1, and we're going to skip. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read it. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. The Lord said, How long are you going to mourn for Saul? I've already rejected him. It's over with. I've already moved on. You have to think about these things when you're reading the word of God. You don't want the Lord to move on from you. You don't want the Lord to give you over to a reprobated mind to where you're thinking you're doing things right and you're completely wrong. Well, well, well. You have to think about these things. Why take that risk? Skip down to verse 13, brother, and read it. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Now, since we're right here, we've got to point this out. It said, uh, the spirit of the Lord came upon David. Didn't dive into him. Didn't make him start running. Bye. Shouting down the aisle. <laughs> hooping and hollering. Foaming at the mouth. Just got to point it out while we're here. But it says the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. Read verse 14, brother. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. But that same spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Oh Keep reading. What else? And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And an evil spirit from who troubled him? From the Lord. From the Lord troubled him. So think about that. You living right. You're keeping the commandments of God. You believing in Jesus. You're doing everything right, but then you, again, that doubt start to seek in. You start thinking you're doing everything for nothing now because you're not seeing the progress, or you may not be getting blessed like you feel like you should be. So you decide to turn back. Or your friends are having fun. Your brothers and sisters, you know, you see all of that evil that they're doing, and you get to missing it. My, my, my. You want to go back and dibble and dabble a little bit. Don't do it. Lord, go, you know, he, he's a merciful God. He'll spare me just this once. No, 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 no. Jesus. What if that spirit of the Lord, oh that evil spirit from the Lord come upon you, and now you don't have a clue of what's right and what's wrong. You don't know up from down no more. Read 14 again, brother. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. He got visited from that unwanted guest, that unwanted evil guest there, didn't he? All because of disobedience, a lapse in judgment in the moment, 
and a lack of fear. Let's go over to Psalm chapter 34. Y'all still with me? Yeah. Gotta stay awake. I gotta keep you awake now. I know it's quiet. My, my, we ain't gonna be here long. Yeah. Peace, Psalm chapter 34. We're gonna read one verse here. Psalms chapter 34. We're going to pick it up at verse 9. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, the ones that believe in Jesus and keep his commandments, for there is no want to them that fear them. And this is going to segue us right into the path of the blessed. And we're going to take our time on this section because nowadays people equate Success with blessed. Right, right, right. So we got to spend a little time here. So are you truly blessed? Just because you feel like you're successful in this world, you're making some good money, got a nice big old house, and you, you feel like you're blessed. And you may be, but we got to find out if you are truly blessed. Let's go over to James chapter 1. We're going to take our time today. Now, y'all let me know if you got something to do. Might have to cut, this, cut it short if y'all got something to do. Y'all got something to do? Y'all let me know now. James chapter 1. We're going to pick it up at verse 17. Ask yourself the question, are you truly blessed? James chapter 1. Verse 17, my brother, go ahead and read it. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Amen. He say every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no differences, no changes, no evil, no darkness. But you have to ask yourself the question, who is blessing you? Why you got to ask yourself that? Because we understand, and we're going to read Satan blesses too. Let's go over to Matthew chapter 4. You got to ask yourself who blessing you. Got to find out. Because you feel like you got everything you need. You're taken care of. We just read every good gift come down from the Father of lights. Amen. Every good gift and every perfect gift. And that's right, because we just read it. We believe that. Yes, but you got to find out who's blessing you. Matthew chapter 4, and this is Jesus being tempted of the devil after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. Satan love to come to you when you're weak. Bye, bye, bye. Love to come to you when you're down. Matthew chapter 4, let's pick it up at verse 1, my brother. When you get there, go ahead and read it. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Keep reading. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Keep reading. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It is written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So Satan begins to tempt the Lord here. Let's skip down to verse 8 and continue. Read it, brother. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. So Satan takes Jesus Christ himself, our Lord and Savior, up into a mountain and shows him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Could you imagine? There's some beautiful places on this planet, y'all. He showed him all these beautiful places. What makes you think that the Lord, that Satan won't do you that same way? What makes you think that Satan won't lift you up? and show you all the things that you have been desiring. That big old house that you've been desiring, 
I'm going to show it to you. And matter of fact, I'm going to wake a way for you to get it. You know what? That husband, that wife that you've been eyeing, I'm going to make a way for you to get him or her. She may not, or he may not be the right one for you, but you want it. So I'm going to make a way for you to get it. That big old six-figure job that you've been wanting, you know what? You've been asking the Lord for that for quite some time. And the Lord didn't want you to have that. But you know what? Being the gracious God that I am, I'm going to make a way for you to get it. Hmm. So he showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the earth, of the world, and the glory of them. Read verse 9, brother. And saith unto him, all these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. All you got to do is fall down and worship me. That's all you got to do. Kick that Lord and Savior in the garbage can. Stop doing what the Lord told you to do. And go back to partying. Go back to having fun. Go back to committing adultery, sleeping around on your wife or your husband. Go back to doing all those good things that you used to love to do. And I'll give it to you. I thought all good things came from above. And they do, though. But you have to consider what is good. Because, again, Satan blesses, too. Satan can give you that six-figure job. But you had a job that you could take care of your family. You can make it to class every week. Well, You're taking care of all your bills. Yeah. All your things, are every, everything is good. Got a nice car. Mortgage paid up. Got you a good job. You can make it to Sabbath class. You can make it to the feast days. Please. Everything is lush. But then all, all of a sudden that six-figure job comes. And now you got to give up a few things. You got to give up your Sabbath day every now and then. You got to give up some of them feast days that you had all of them off and your bosses were working with you. You got to give up serving in the house of the Lord. Can't be in a choir no more and sing for God. You got to give that up because you can't make it to practice no more. And then you find yourself going farther and farther and farther away from the truth until you're so far gone, you can't come back. You have to ask yourself, who is blessing you? Verse 10, my brother, read it. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. That's the only thing. Him only shalt thou serve. It ain't nothing else worth it. You gonna give up your salvation for a house, for some fun, for a job, for your family, for your kids? It ain't nothing else worth it. Don't let, this, don't let Satan take your crown, y'all. But let's look at something else. Let's go over to Mark chapter 10. This is Jesus dealing with the rich young ruler right after telling him, if you enter into, enter into life, keep the commandments. But it was one thing that he lacked. Mark chapter 10. We're going to pick it up at verse 21. Y'all still with me? Like I said before, it's quiet in here. But it be like that sometimes. More. Chapter 10. We're going to pick it up in verse 21. More. Chapter 10. Pick it up at verse 21. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest. It's one thing that you lack. You've been keeping the commandments. That's good. But it's one thing that you lack. Keep reading. Go thy way. Sell whatsoever thou hast and give to the poor. Uh-huh. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross. Follow me. Come, deny yourself. Yep. Sell those things, them great possessions that you had, that you've been working your butt off for, 
You got to sell that stuff. I want you to deny yourself completely now and follow me. Keep reading. Then 22. And he was sad at that saying. He got sad at that saying. Keep reading. And went away grieved. For he had great possession. Mm, keep reading. And Jesus looked round about and saith unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? No, I just made a statement right here. How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? Keep reading. And, this, and the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answereth again and saith unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? And Lord just put a stamp on it there. How hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? Can't trust in no riches. It's okay to be rich. It's okay to have wealth. It's okay to provide for your family. That's fine. But you can't begin to start trusting in riches over trusting in God. The money ain't going to get you into the kingdom. Keep reading, brother. 25. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Keep reading. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? Who then can be saved, Lord? Keep reading. And Jesus, looking upon them, saith, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. All things are possible with God. Amen. So it's not impossible, but it can be extremely hard if your mind is not in the right place. Amen. Trusting in God, you have to enter ye in at the straight gate because it's a narrow way. It's a narrow path. And it's going to be few of us that find it. Amen. Few that find that narrow way. Ain't nothing wrong with having riches, you all. But we have to understand that it's for the love of money that is the root of all evil, right? Those who trust in riches. But Paul says something in Timothy that we also need to pay attention to. Let's go over to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. And we're going to pick it up at verse 3. 1 Timothy chapter 6, we're going to pick it up at verse 3. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. Amen. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. He said, if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep reading. He is proud. He's proud. Knowing nothing. Knowing nothing. Keep but, reading. But doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmises. Keep reading. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. Supposing that gain is godliness. He said, from such withdraw thyself. But what, brother? Read verse 6. What but, else? But godliness with contentment is great gain. That's great gain. When the Lord is providing for you and you see that you're taking care of your family and the Lord then gave you his holy Sabbath day off Amen. and all the feast days and all your bills paid, you got food in your refrigerator, Jesus. you got a car to drive in, it may be a hoop, this so what? You're getting a point A to point B, just like everybody who's driving them BMW and Benzes and whatever else is out there. You're still getting the job done. Godliness with contentment is what? Great gain. Great gain. Read verse 7, brother. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. We didn't bring nothing into this world, y'all. We came into this world butt naked. With nothing. Nada. Praying that the Lord, thanking God that the Lord has given us another opportunity at life, y'all. Thanking God that he has mercy for us. 
We brought nothing into this world, and it's certain that we can carry nothing out. Verse 8, read it. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Keep reading. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. Keep reading. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. It can drown you. They that be rich fall into temptation and a snare which drown men in destruction and perdition and into many foolish and hurtful lusts. Ver read verse 10, brother. For the love of money is the root of all evil. That's right. Keep reading. Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. Because you start believing in it. You start trusting in it. You start putting God on the back burner. You start saying, I'm so blessed. How can, it, how can this not be God? I got everything that I've ever desired. I'm a millionaire now. How can this, how can you tell me that God is not blessing me? For the love of money is the root of all evil. Read verse 11, brother. Finish. And pierce themselves through with many sorrows. Amen. Keep reading. But thou, O man of God, flee these things. And follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Amen. Skip down to verse 13 and read it. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession. Keep reading. That thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. You got to keep this commandment all the way until the end without spot, unrebukable. That's without correction. That means you got to check yourself, examine yourself daily, wake up, pray to the Lord, ask God, Lord, am I on the right path? Lord, if, I feel, if you feel like I'm off the right path, put me on the right path. That thou keep this commandment without spot on rebukable until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Keep reading. Which in his times he shall show who is the blessed. The Lord is going to show who is the blessed. Keep reading. And only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Skip down to verse 17, brother, and read it. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. That's right. Who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Keep reading. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. You got to be willing in everything. You got to be willing to serve God. God don't want no robots. I remember when I was a young boy, I used to pray to God all the time, Lord, just make, just make me a robot, Lord. I just want to serve. Just force me to serve you. I don't want to take no chances. I don't want to take no risks. Just force me to serve you. But God don't operate like that. He wants you to choose him. He wants you to choose to live right. And you got to wake up every day with that same type of mindset. I choose to serve God with all of my might, with all of my being. Where were you at, brother? 19. Read it. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation yeah. against the time to come that they may hold on eternal life. Amen. We have to remember that you don't want anything in your path yes. that's going to get you off of this narrow path, yes. this narrow way. But now let's really dive into the path of the blessed. Let's go over to Proverbs chapter 16. Let's look at the, the path of the blessed, the true blessed. The one that the Lord is going to come back and name the blessed. Proverbs chapter 16. We're going to read one verse here. Verse 20. Y'all still with me? Oh, yeah. Wake up now. Right. Got to keep you awake. <laughs> we ain't going to be here too long. Proverbs chapter 16. We're going to pick it up at one uh, verse 20. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. He that handleth a matter wisely shall find good, and whoso trusteth in the Lord 
happy is he. See, this person right here is not easily rattled. Not easily shook up. He said, he that handleth a matter wisely shall find good. So you're not always causing confusion. You're not always in a tit for tat with somebody. Well, you handling a matter wisely. Somebody backbite, backbiting at you, you're going to walk up to that brother or sister with peace. You're going to show them love. You're going to show them the God that is in you. Instead of meeting them where they at. You got to handle a matter wisely. Amen. This is the path of the blessed. Amen. Luke chapter 6. We're going to walk this down. We're going to look at the path of the true blessed. Because you can be blessed in another way, which we, we read, we talked about. Satan can bless you. But we want to be the blessed on the Lord's side, right? Amen. Luke chapter 6. Pick it up at verse 27. Luke chapter 6. We're going to pick it up at verse 27. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. But I say unto you which hear. But I say unto you which hear, the ones that are listening, keep reading. Love your enemies. Well, Do good to them which hate you. Keep reading. Bless them that curse you. And pray for them which despitefully use you. We got to get here. Yes, Lord. Love your enemies. Do good to them that hate you and bless them that curse you. Pray for them which despitefully use you. We got to get here. This is the path of the blessed. Skip down to verse 30, my brother, and let's continue. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. Give to every man that asketh of thee understanding that it's the Lord who has blessed you to be able to give. Amen. And if something gets taken away, if you continue to remain faithful, the Lord can bless you with that again. Amen. Skip down to verse 32, my brother, and read it. For if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. Sinners do that, y'all. If you love your brother and your sister that you see all the time, every Sabbath you're coming in here hugging and, and you're kissing them and all that good stuff, happy Sabbath, and sinners do that the same thing. Yep. You have to dig deeper and love the ones that you know that's talking about you. You got to pray for the ones that you know that's trying to get you fired. You can't wish bad on them. You got to love them, pray for them, show them the light that is in you. He said, for if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. Keep reading. And if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. Sinners do that, y'all. What makes you different? Keep reading. And if ye lend to them, of whom ye hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. Now you know how we all get, we get with that money now. Man, look. You know how we get with that money now. If you ain't got it, don't give it. If you got it, give it and don't respect it back again. Let it go. It's a gift. <laughs> Let it go. Don't be handing that brother over $20. Loan somebody $20, $30, you every week. Say, brother, uh, <laughs> you know uh, about that 20 You said you was going to give that back the next day, my brother, my sister. Uh, when you say you're going to give that back, I mean, you know, I need that back. You know, our bills got to be paid. It's $20. Yeah. If you didn't have it, don't give it. Don't give it. Right. But if you give it, let it go. then let that money go. Because sinners... Act the same way. Brother, long, man, give me, hey, man, you got my money? Get to a point to where you're hating the brother. Get to the point to where you're hating the sister. And now you in fault. You have to elevate your walk, y'all. Amen. Amen. Read verse 35, brother. But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great. Amen. And ye shall be children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Keep reading. Be ye therefore merciful, as your father also is merciful. You got to love your enemies. You got to do good. 
You got to lean for hoping, hoping for nothing again, Amen. and remembering that your reward is coming from above. The Lord will reward you for doing these things. Yes, sir. Don't expect no, don't expect no reward from, from the person you lending to. He said, be ye therefore merciful as your father also is merciful. First Peter chapter 3. We're looking at the path of the blessed now, y'all. The truly blessed. First Peter chapter 3. We're going to read one verse here, verse 9. First Peter chapter 3, one verse here, verse 9. Go ahead and read it. Not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but contrarywise, blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. You're not going to render evil for evil. You're going to do just the opposite. You know somebody mistreating you, you can't go back, oh, sister, I'm finna, I'm finna get you. You know, you know how I was now. You can't do that. You got to let that go. You got to learn how to turn the other cheek, walk away. Don't get the last word in. You got to learn how to bless the brother or sister. Show some kindness. This is the path of the truly blessed, y'all. Amen. Let's go over to Matthew chapter 5. We're walking it down. Let's see who Jesus called the blessed. Matthew chapter 5. We're going to pick it up in verse 1. Matthew chapter 5. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read it. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. Keep reading. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying. So Jesus is about to teach us who is the blessed. Amen. Skip down to verse 6, my brother, and read it. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. You have to hunger and thirst after it. You got to search this word out. You have to study this word to show that you are approved unto God, not unto me, not unto Pastor Boy, not unto Pastor Jesse, Brother Tabaja, but unto God. Amen. You have to do these things. It's not about us. It's about your walk, your salvation. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Skip down to verse 8, my brother, and read it. Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. Blessed are the ones that have a pure mind. Yeah, you might have a wicked thought that pop up in your mind, but you got to cast that thing out. You might have a wicked dream. You got to wake up, Lord. Lord, please don't let me have that dream again. In Jesus' name, I rebuke that foolishness. You got to do that. Yes. Blessed are they, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So you got to have your mind right. That's the pure in heart. Skip down to verse 10, brother, and read it. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And you're going to get persecuted. You you're going to go through something. It's not an easy walk, y'all. No, it is. Keep reading. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Keep reading. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. We not the first people who are going through this thing, and last. we ain't going to be the last people well, that's going well, through this well. thing. It says, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all matter of evil against you falsely. They lying on you. Well, you still got to treat them good. You still got to treat them right. You still got to respect them. You still got to show up to work and not curse them out. You still got to say righteous things. You still got to stay on this righteous path. You can't let anger take over your mind and start sinning. 
and try to blame it on somebody else because it's your fault, it's your walk. And you're going to be a, held accountable for your own actions. This is the path of the blessed because narrow is the way. Let's go to Psalms chapter 119. We're winding down. No, it's a little quiet. I'm normally a little bit louder, a little rowdier. But today ain't that day. It's quiet in here. And it be like that sometimes. Psalm chapter 119. We're going to pick it up at verse 2. Psalms chapter 119. We're going to pick it up at verse 2. We winding down, y'all. One verse here. Go ahead and read it. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. Some of your heart. With the whole heart. You got to seek God with your whole heart. Your whole mind. Because if you don't, y'all, you will find yourself back the same place, thinking about the same things that you used to do, yes. doing some of the same things that you used to do, and then you're going to end up off of this straight and narrow path. Yes, sir. But see, it's all about choices. It's your choice if you want to walk this walk or not. I can't force you to do it. Your brother can't force you to do it. Your mother can't force you to do it. Your pastor can't force you to do it. You have to force yourself to do it. It's your choice. Because I can't get you in the kingdom. Let's go over to Psalms chapter 31. Because we're going to tie all this back in. The fear of the Lord, the path of the blessed, the narrow way. Because again, it's your choice to walk in it. And we got to see what is at stake here. Psalms chapter 31. We're going to pick it up at verse 19. Let's see, let's see what's at stake. Let's see what you could possibly be giving up. Psalms chapter 31. We wind it down. Pick it up at verse 19, my brother. And go ahead and read it. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Oh, great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for the ones that fear him and trust in him. Skip down to verse 23, brother, and read it. O oh, love the Lord, all ye, all ye his saints. For the Lord preserved the faithful and plentifully reward the proud doer. Keep reading. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. Amen. See, it's your choice. If you want to step into that goodness, you got to make the decision this day to step into that goodness. Let's go over to Isaiah chapter 40. Again, we winding down. Isaiah chapter 40. We're going to pick it up in verse 1 here. Your choice. Go ahead and read it. Isaiah chapter 40, pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read it. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Uh-huh. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. And that's another thing that we have to realize, y'all, because we know better. And because we know better, the Lord gives us double for our sins. Yes, Think about it. Some of the things that we go through, you look at some of the other nations that are out there, sometimes they get away with some things, but they just getting by. They'll get punished in the end. But because we know the word of God, we know to believe in Jesus. We know to keep his commandments. We know to keep his feast days. We know to honor your mother, your father. We know this book. Yes. You can't let anybody separate you. Amen. You can't let nobody take you off this path because the Lord will punish you double because you know better. Skip down to verse 10, my brother, and read it. Amen. Behold, the Lord will come with strong hands, uh -huh. and his arms shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him. And his work before him. His reward is with him. Keep reading. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm. 
and carry them in his bosom. And he shall gently lead those that are with young. Amen. Keep reading. Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand mm. and meted out heaven with the span. Keep reading. And comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains and scales and the hills in a balance. Keep reading. Who hath directed the spirit of the Lord? Or being his counselor, have taught him. Who have directed the spirit of the Lord? Or being his counselor, have taught him? Nobody. Amen. Keep reading. With whom took he counsel? And who instructed him? And taught him in the path of judgment? And taught him knowledge? And showed to him the way of understanding? Nobody. Skip down to verse 18 and read it. To whom then will ye liken God? Or what likeness will ye compare, compare, compare unto him? Who are you going to compare this God to? Nobody. Who can you compare this God to? Nobody. He said here, with whom took he counsel, and whom, and who instructed him, and taught him in the path of judgment, and taught him knowledge, and showed to him the way of understanding. Skip down to verse 21, my brother. Have ye not known? Have you not known? Have ye not heard? Have ye not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Keep reading. Have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? Keep reading. It is he. It is he. That Keep reading. That sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. Keep reading. That bringeth the princes to nothing. He maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. So you going to choose to disobey this God? Think about that. Who has taught this God? That's done created everything that you see. The air that we breathe. The sun, the moon, the stars. You, everything, and you're going to choose to disobey this God? You're going to take the risk of putting your salvation on the line for just one little moment, one little happy moment in your eyes. You're going to put your salvation on the line for one piece of meat. Come on now, y'all. Think about that. Skip down to verse 25, my brother, and continue. To whom then will ye liken me, or shall be my equal, mm. saith the Holy One? Keep reading. Lift up your eyes on high, and behold who hath created these things, that bringeth out their hosts by number. He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might. For that he is strong in power, not one faileth. Do y'all understand that? The sun rises every day. It don't fail. The moon rises every night. It don't fail. The stars come out every night. They don't fail. The air, it ain't stop. If it did, we wouldn't be breathing. Think about it. The only thing that fails on this planet is us. Everything that the Lord has created don't fail. The animals do their responsibility. They act right. They obedient. We are the only creature that the Lord has created that, that fails, that, be, that is disobedient. Think about that. Read verse 27, brother. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Why do you say that, Israel? Why do you say that your ways are hid from him? Why do you think that you're getting away with things? Why don't you understand that the Lord can take your breath tomorrow? Tomorrow's not promised to you. Wake up, Israel. Wake up, the nations. Get on your job. Serve the Lord with all of your might. Stop playing with this God. He may not have the same mercy as he had on that sister. He may not have the same mercy as he had on that brother. It may be your day. Yes. You got to stop playing with this God, y'all. Read verse 
see verse 28. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard? That the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, mm. neither is weary. He don't get tired. Thank you, Lord. He don't faint. He see everything that you're doing. You're walking up to me telling me that you, oh, brother, oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a good servant. Brother, I want to help out in the church. I want to do this. I want to do that. But you know you're committing foolishness. You know you wickeder than thou. The Lord see you. You may be fooling me. You may be fooling Pastor Jesse, Pastor Boy, but you ain't fooling your God. Why would you take that risk of getting all the way up to Judgment Day? And you got you, the Lord is wearing your good and your bad. You get all the way up there, and He said, "Depart from me." I never knew you, ye that work iniquity. What are you going to say then? It's too late. Where were you at, brother? End of 28. There is no searching of his understanding. There is no searching of his understanding. Keep reading. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Keep reading. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. Keep reading. And the young men shall utterly fall. And the young men shall utterly fall. Young men, young women, wake up. Understand that the Lord can cut you off too. You don't have time. You don't have time to waste. Tell our children. Teach our young men and our young women, the brothers, the elders, tell our children, we don't have time. If the Lord decide to bust open them clouds, what are you going to do? Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Keep reading. But they that wait upon the Lord, but they that wait upon the Lord, shall renew their strength. Shall renew their strength. Keep reading. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hmm. I think I'm gonna choose this God. Amen. And wait on Him, because He said His reward is with Him. Amen. I understand that. I got to endure all the way to the end. Isaiah chapter 64. We winding down, y'all. Y'all still with me? Oh, yeah. Isaiah chapter 64. We don't have time, y'all. You got to get your mind right right now. You got to serve this God with all your might right now. You got to fear this God right now. You got to get on that narrow path right now. Not tomorrow. Right now, today. But if you don't want to wait on the Lord, if you choose not to wait on the Lord or to serve him or to do whatever you feel, or whatever you want to, whatever you perceive, whatever you think, whatever it feels good to you, if you decide to go that path, that's on you. But the Lord has something for you. Isaiah, where we at, brother? 64. Mm. Verse 4. Read it, brother. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither hath, uh, hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. And that's what we have to hope in. Yes, sir. We have to hope in that and believe and trust in that. But like I said before, if you choose not to, if you choose to walk your own path, the Lord has something waiting for you. Isaiah chapter 26. Flip right on back to Isaiah chapter 26. Because it's your choice. I can't force you to do it. Even though it grieves me to see you walk down the wrong path. Isaiah 26. We're going to read one verse here. We're almost out of here, y'all. I thank y'all for bearing with me. 
Isaiah chapter 26, we're going to read one verse here, verse 21. When you get there, go ahead and read it. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth mm. for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Y'all see that? He said, Behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants Get your of life right. You have to stay on that narrow path. Enter ye in at the straight gate, because narrow is the way. Psalms chapter 34. We have two more places after this. I thank you all for bearing with me. Psalms chapter 34. We're going to pick it up at verse 12. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? He say, what man is he that desireth life and loveth many days? What kind of man is that? And how do you do this? How do you see good, right? Skip down to verse 14 and read it. Depart from evil. It's simple. Depart from evil. Simple as that. Stop doing the wicked things. Stop doing the things that you know are wrong. You know they're wrong, and you still continue to do them. you got to depart from evil. Keep reading. And do good. And do Pursue good. it. Keep reading. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. And what is our righteousness? Those who keep the commandments of God and the faith in Jesus. But what else, brother? Keep reading verse 16. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Mm. Ain't nothing else to be said. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. See, now the Lord is going to lay it all out for you. And we got one more place after this. He's going to lay it all out for you plainly here. Deuteronomy chapter 30. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. It is your choice to serve this God with all your might. Because you won't have an excuse in the end. You won't have no excuse, y'all. I'm going to tell you right now, it will not be an excuse. What are you going to say? If your good got to outweigh your bad, what are you going to say? Lord, I didn't know. Lord, I didn't hear. Lord, my, one of my ears was clogged up that day. Lord, I didn't see it. I went blind. Now you saw it. And you heard it. But you chose not to abide by it. Deuteronomy chapter 30. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. We got one more place after this. Go ahead and read it, brother. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee. He said, and it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, and thou shalt call them to mind. You're starting to remember now. You're starting to understand the blessing and the, the curse. You got a choice here. Keep reading. And shall return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, mm. with all thine heart and with all thine soul. Keep reading. Then, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. Keep reading. If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee and from this will he bring thee. All we got to do is, is, is listen and obey. Amen. That's all we got to do. And the Lord said, I'll come and get you. Thank you I'll come and bring you out. I'll come and gather you up and bring you unto myself. All you got to do is obey yes. and choose life. Skip down to verse 6, my brother, and read it. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou 
mayest live. Skip down to verse 10 and read it. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. We got to point this out now. It's a big two-letter word that started that verse off. Yeah. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Keep reading. To keep his commandments and his statutes which are written in this book they of the law. Where? Hold on, they written what? In this book. They written in this book. Amen. The one that you are reading. Yes, the words that you're looking at right now. If you keep and live by this book, Amen. keep reading. And if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart. Some of your heart. With all thine heart. Because some of us think that we can do this and do that. Come to the Sabbath and we all good. Some of us think that we, because we feeding the homeless and that we visiting the sick and we can still do this or that, that we good. No, no. The Lord said you got to come to him and serve him with how much of your heart? All thine heart and with all thy soul. Read verse 11, brother. For this commandment, which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee. Neither is it far off. It's not hidden from you. Keep reading. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up for us to heaven mm. and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? Keep reading. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over, to the, over the sea for us and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? Where is it, brother? But the word is very nigh unto thee. Yes, it is. In thy mouth and in thine heart that thou mayest do it. The word... Is very near to you. It's right here, sitting in your lap, on your desk. The Lord done put it in your mind. It's your choice now. Verse 15. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. He has set before you this day life and good and death and evil. But what's the flip side? Skip down to verse 17, my brother, and read that. But if thy turn thine heart away, excuse me, but if thine heart turn away so that thou will not hear. But if your heart turn away so that you decide that you don't want to hear this word and you don't want to obey this word, keep reading. But shall be drawn away and worship other gods mm. and serve them. Keep reading. I denounce unto you this day. No, I'm going to give you some time. I denounce. I'm going to give you some time. You have some months, some, you got some months to get yourself together. You got some years to get yourself together. I got until, you know what, until I got baptized to get myself together. He said, I denounce unto you this day, keep reading, that ye shall surely perish, mm. and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, with as thou passest over Jordan to go to possess. Keep reading. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. Choose life, y'all. Choose life. Amen. I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that not only yourself, but your children may live. They may not understand why you are so bent on serving God. Well, well. They may not understand it. That's why it's even the more important that you walk this walk with all of your might because they're watching you. They're looking at you. It's a narrow way, a narrow path. Don't let no one take your crown, but again, it's your choice. Let's go to our last place, you all. Thank you all for bearing with me. Romans chapter 8. Romans <laughs> chapter 8. We got one more spot. One more spot. And I'm going to let you out of here. I love it. Romans chapter 8. I love it. I love it. Because you cannot allow anything, and I mean nothing, your mother, your father, big mama, papa, auntie, nobody separates you from the love of Christ. You can't let nobody take your crown. Romans chapter 8, 
Pick it up in verse 18, my brother, and let's finish it. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Amen. Remember that. Skip down to verse 35 and finish it, brother. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? You got to ask yourself that question. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Keep reading. Shall tribulation? Shall tribulation? Or distress? Or distress? Or persecution? Or persecution? Or famine? Or famine? Or nakedness? Or nakedness? Or peril? Or peril? Or sword? Or sword? Keep reading. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded. For I am persuaded. Are you persuaded? Yes, Lord. You have to ask yourself that. Are you persuaded in this word? Keep reading. That neither death, that neither death, nor life, nor life, nor angels, nor angels, nor principalities, nor principalities, nor power, nor power, nor things present, nor things present, nor things to come, nor things to come, nor height, mm. nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And with that, you all, I thank you all for your time.